All right. We are joined now by Anthony Smith Jr., uh, former Liberty standout. Uh, Anthony, I have to start out. So we were freshmen at the same time at Liberty, believe it or yep. not. Yep. Um, you had a wild career at Liberty. So year one and two, you're with the the high volume shooter, Larry Blair. Yeah. Uh, year three, you lead the team in scoring. And then year four, this kid named Seth Curry comes in and, and, and steals all the shots. Has anyone kind of had a more wild career through four years that, that, than you on really four just different teams? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was uh, definitely four different teams. You know, I was under two regimes. Uh, and uh, the first, you know, the first year, my freshman year, I was actually supposed to redshirt. Uh, and then uh, we end up David Dees, a guy that was playing in front of me, he ended up transferring. So I had to uh, I had to play. I was coming off the bench the first nine games and then uh, ended up winning the starting role uh, nine games in. Uh, we weren't very good, <laughs> to be honest. We, seven game <laughs> seven games won all year. It was a, it was a bad, bad year. But, uh, you know, I kind of had to learn by trial and error. I learned a lot from Larry uh, in those first two years. Uh, so, it, I mean, it was nice. It was it was definitely different. And then. I just learned to, you know, I needed to do whatever the team needed, help them to win. Uh, I was a little bit more versatile, more versatile than some of the guys. So especially like the last year when Seth came, I ended up playing like the four. So I went from hmm. a shooting guard to a small four. And then when Coach McKay, our senior year, we ended up playing small ball. So I was playing the four. So I just found ways to do, uh, impact the game and, uh, you know, try to make everybody better. I knew Seth needed more touches as far as, you know, that's what he was going to do for us. He was going to score. So I didn't mind him taking more shots. Uh, you know, I still had a great career. I learned a little bit every year and I learned from a lot of those guys. Yeah. Anthony, thanks for joining us. Oh um, yeah. So for uh, any of our, maybe if we have students listening or just recent alumni um, that maybe haven't been following the program that long, I mean, in my opinion, you're, you're probably on the Mount Rushmore of all time Liberty players. Um, and if you Google Liberty flames, Anthony Smith, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but it comes up. Um, uh, only player in the nation during the 2008 season to attempt at least 203 point field goals and succeed on at least 50% of his field goal attempts and 40% of his three point field goal attempts. One of only five players in the nation to accomplish that same feat while attempting at least 100 three-point field goals, the other players were, uh, check this out, Nick, Mario Chalmers, Chalmers from Chalmers. Kansas, <laughs> Lee Cummard from BYU, yep. Malik Harrison from Oregon, and some guy named James Harden from yep. Arizona State. And that's pretty impressive. Um, tell us about kind of what your career was like post-Liberty after you um, graduated and left here. So post Liberty, you know, I got a shot in summer league with the uh, the Indiana Pacers. So I played in the Orlando Summer League right out of right out of Liberty. I uh, got to play against some good guys there. That's Russell Westbrook's first year, James Harden, all those guys. So played against them in summer league. Uh, right after summer league, I went and had a workout with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, and then this is kind of where my career kind of took a <clears throat> took a turn because this is when I found out that it was a lot about business and, and who, you know, and all this type of stuff. But, uh, mm -hmm. my first agent, uh, my first agent, I was in the middle of working out with Oklahoma. I was supposed to be there for like a week. Uh, I was there for like two days and, uh, he calls me, tells me that I have a, uh, tryout for Barcelona, you know, FC Barcelona, anybody who follows Euro basketball or even soccer knows who FC Barcelona is. So I'm 22, I hear FC Barcelona. All I'm thinking is Euro League, you know, six, seven figure checks. Uh, and he actually steered me wrong. So they had a second team in a second division and me not knowing any of this and uh, not really having anybody to uh, talk to about it. I end up getting on the plane and leaving Oklahoma and going there early. Uh, didn't turn out the way it kind of was. Money wasn't what I was thinking it was. Uh, so from there, my career trajectory kind of I kind of had to work from the bottom to try to get to uh, higher levels. And I, I did. But it was just like you realize how much uh, one decision can affect your your professional career or mm. who your agent is and, you know, things like that. So 
I kind of had to to learn the business, but I, I mean, I still end up having a 10 year career. Yeah. I played in top level leagues. I played for historic teams. You know, I can't complain, but it would definitely could have been a lot easier had I not listened to my first agent. I will say that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, 10 years overseas is nothing to to look back and, you know, not be happy about. And yeah. And uh, so it was fun. So Anthony, how'd you uh, how'd you get hooked back up with uh, Liberty Radio? I know when I when I saw you on the sideline, I was like, wow, that that's so that's so cool that uh, uh, they 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 got you to, uh, on the radio team. How how did that all come about? Uh, so it was kind of a random instance. I was, uh, you know, I'm always around the program, so I'm I'm at practices here and there, and uh, working out in the gym all the time. And uh, Alan sends me a text message, or uh, he sends me a Facebook message, and said. Uh, you know, coach, uh, I'm looking for a color analyst. Coach McKay kind of threw your name out there. If that's something that you'd be interested in. Uh, and uh, right off the back, I told him I would. I've never done anything with the radio. I've never done anything <laughs> color commentary. But, I mean, I know basketball, so I figured, you know, it couldn't be too hard to sit there and talk about it. Uh, and being on the radio, I think it's a lot, you know, it was a good start, especially with that, because, he does the play by play. So he, he does the talking most of the time. And all I have to do is chime in with a little basketball tidbit. So I thought that would be a good start. And I was, I mean, I'm excited to represent Liberty in any fashion, you know, funny being on the other side of the table, but uh, I, I really like it. It was the first game was, was fun to call and it was kind of trial by error. And, you know, I don't think I did too bad. So <laughs> I can't wait for tomorrow either. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to mute. Uh, Matt Warner tomorrow and, and listen to the radio broadcast. <laughs> don't tell, don't tell Matt that. So, uh, uh, but yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, I think it's awesome that, that you're, you're still involved with the program. Talk to us about your relationship with, with Richie McKay, who took over your, your junior year. Um, and, and you know, how that's, how that's, uh, you know, help maybe keep you connected with, with Liberty said he helped, you know, maybe, uh, get you connected with the radio, radio gig. How, how did, how did that relationship come to about? And, uh, was it like a, a blessing for you that he, he came over to Liberty kind of, you know, unexpected? Uh, for sure. It was a blessing because I was, I, my first two years, I was literally ready to transfer every year. My mm. first year after my freshman year, we won seven games. I was, I was about to go to a Juco, uh, in Dallas, uh, Collin County, uh, Collin County community college which is a, a powerhouse Juco. I was going to transfer there. They were trying to get me there because it was, I couldn't take winning seven games. And then my mom says, stick it out. So I stuck it out. Sophomore year comes around. We do a little better. Uh, and then coach Dutton gets fired. So now there's some unknowns. I don't know who's coming in to coach. I don't know who he's bringing. So I was ready to transfer. Then I was going to, I had a transfer set up to North Texas. <laughs> and then again, I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see who the coach is and we'll go from there. So he comes in that summer. I remember he came in. It was him. We were playing pickup. It was Coach McKay, Coach Lair, and uh, who was with Coach? It was Coach McKay, Coach Lair, and Coach Seuss. So they come in the gym. You know, these are these are high level coaches. I already I I heard where they came from. So these are high level coaches coming in from a, a Mountain West school, and they they kind of have that aura about them as they walk in the gym. Uh, they watch us play for a little while, and then. Uh, once we're done, Coach McKay pulls me to the side and uh, he tells me going into my junior year, he says this. Uh, he said, I've watched your film. He said, I really think you're going to be an important piece to the program and I would love to build around you. And he told me that. And after the first couple workouts, you know, I, I from now, I just I, I knew I needed to stay here. And uh, it it all panned out. Me and Coach McKay got really close over the over the years. I actually made him uh, the godfather to my children uh my my daughter's middle name is mckay <laughs> Jaden mckay mm -hmm. smith so i mean we, we we grew close you know i always talked to him i talked to him when i was overseas about anything about life uh I, I knew he genuinely cared about me so he was definitely a blessing he taught me a lot uh he helped me through the process and uh like to this day it's, it's family that's why i'm always around even when i i just recently moved back to lynchburg but even when i was staying in dallas i would come every summer come to camps, come to workouts, just his families. Well, we're glad that you didn't transfer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been rough without you there for some of those years. 
Um, man, I think I would like to do like a whole other podcast where we just talk about this stuff and like the what summer, happened yeah. when, yeah, what happened summer. when with Anthony Smith? Cause I, cause you were there when we, when me and Kirby were there and we just have a lot of questions and we want to hear some of those stories. Yeah. Um, especially some pit folks that me and Nick went to some of those games away games with Winthrop. It. We, we drove to yeah. Winthrop on a Wednesday uh, night. Winthrop and VMI and the VMI uh, games were fun. <laughs> were fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're in this role now with broadcasting. What do you, are you watching film on NC central, like for, to prepare for <laughs> so, tomorrow night or, or how do you go about that? So they, uh, they send out these game notes, uh, which I haven't even looked at mine yet, but they send out the game notes kind of gives you, you know, information about our players stats, uh, kind of the storyline, which are going to be kind of what you kind of want to cover during the, uh, during the game. And yeah, I, I, I do actually go back and watch the game before uh, just to see their playing style, kind of familiar, uh, familiarize myself with the players, uh, see their tendencies because it makes it a little easier to talk about when, you, when you're not just doing it fresh off the head. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's for, like preparing for anything. You know, you just want to you want to be on top of it. And, and I'm, kinda, I'm a student of the game of basketball. I love basketball. So for me to just sit down and watch a quick game or, you know, pick up tendencies, it's not real hard. So. I definitely, I definitely do that. I, I did it. I did it with a Regent, and I, I'll continue to do that throughout throughout the season. Before we get to talking about the, this team, tell tell us about the the hoodie you're wearing, the kicking it. What is that? So, so the I actually sent uh, Chris Strawn, our manager, uh, when I was there for my four years. He has a nonprofit organization. He loves he loves sneakers. He loves shoes. He was always he always had the freshest shoes on <laughs> in, in college, and he still does now. And, uh, they helped him dance. This is his not yet, yeah, <laughs> and this is his nonprofit organization, uh, kicking it. So they do a bunch of, uh, and I, it came to Liberty. I don't remember he had brought Steph to Liberty, uh, probably I don't know, probably four or five years back, and they did a uh, a big kicking it like a shoe drive to send to Africa, and he does a, a bunch of things like that. And uh, we're still we're still in touch to this day. I talked to a couple guys that I that I play with, and I, I still talk to him. So whenever they have something. I try to support them, and you know, I went out and got me a kicking it hoodie. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, let's get into a little bit about about this team. Um, obviously, you were there for the the Regent game. Um, what was kind of your your overall take on on that game, that performance, kind of what you saw in in, in that game? So what I saw is, you know, I I think that this year it will be a little, it'll be a little different. Uh, as far as they don't have the outside shooting like they have with Keegan or uh, with with Cuff, but I think that getting Colin Porter to the team was a great addition. Uh, I, I like his poise, uh, even against Alabama. Watching that game, uh, he, he he doesn't look like he's the moment's too big for him. He, he keeps the same kind of demeanor throughout the game. I, I really think that he is going to help, and uh, he will be a, a key piece in, in a lot of their victories, uh, to come, uh, Zach Cleveland, again, another freshman. I was impressed by his motor and again, moment didn't seem too big. Uh, even things not going great against Alabama, same motor, same demeanor. Uh, those things are important when you're, when you're looking at players, uh, as far as their growth potential, how are they going to react against an adversity and how are they going to react when things are going good? If they have the same demeanor, it's a good sign. Uh, I think the guys, Kyle Road is, you know, he's Kyle Road. He's an extension of Coach McKay on the court. His IQ is is off the charts. I think that this year they're just going to have to, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have a couple more options, not just having to rely on on Darius every game to get 30 and 25 and 40 <laughs> to, to stay in games. <clears throat> but, uh, I, I, you know, I – I like what I see. They're going to, they execute, still play defense. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think they'll be really tough in the A Sun. So, talk to us about, about that Alabama game. Obviously, you know, it didn't go the way I think anyone wanted or really even expected. I don't think anyone expected it to be, to be that lopsided. T- talk to us about what it's like in, in a game like that where you just really underperform to your standards. What is it like trying to get ready for that next game? And is it like such a long like layoff where you just can't wait to get back on the court to you know maybe right the ship a little bit? 
you know, games like that, you just got to let those go. Uh, you know, you didn't play, you know, you didn't play well, uh, definitely below your, your standard. Even if you lose, you lose, but you know, you, when you play like that, you forget about it. Next game. It, it doesn't matter. We didn't execute next. No, no, no need to sit there and uh, beat yourself up about it. It happens next game, move on, execute and, and continue to move forward. Uh, you know, it's just like any play on the court. You don't want to sit there and you turn the ball over and, and think about it. And then you miss a defense assignment and then it just starts kind of piling up on you. Let it go. Let's move on to the next game. Alabama's a, a great team. You knew that you had to be on your, your P's and Q's to, to stay in the game and, and you didn't do that. And, now you have another opportunity coming up in a couple of days. Just let it go. What did you think about the way that Alabama defended Darius? They were really just, uh, uh, in, in, I don't know, one of the most in, intense defenses I've seen against him. You know, really able to use their athleticism. Do you think that maybe that that maybe the the intensity is going to be even more, ratchet up a little bit more this year? Or do, you, do you think maybe that's something that that Liberty can maybe even exploit a little bit? Oh, for sure. I mean, you don't you don't score 25 points a game and then walk into a game like the other team hasn't specifically planned for you. It's it's going to be it's going to be just like that, probably game in a game out. You know, some teams won't have the athletes that Alabama did, so they won't be able to do what Alabama did. Uh, and but I think, with like I said, with the addition of Colin Porter, it kind of takes some of the pressure off of there as far as not having to bring the ball up, not having to create a shot every time. Uh, I think that teams playing that way will get hurt by the other guys because they're focusing so much on Darius and he has, he has help, you know? So uh, I think it's going to, it's going to open up the court for them. And then so in turn is going to open up the court right back for him. And he's a tremendous talent. He's going to find ways to score. You know, that was just an off game. Yeah. I think, uh, sorry, Nick. Um, you know, we saw a little bit of that too with Darius being in foul trouble you know, pretty early on, but Liberty kind of stayed in it. And, you know, I thought that they had a great chance of kind of chipping away um, once Darius got back into the game. But, um, you know, how do you see, uh, you know, do you see anybody in particular kind of stepping up? I mean, I'm looking at the roster and, um, you know, when we played Regent or when they played Regent, Zach Cleveland kind of looked like he's going to be like a big energy guy. Uh, what do you see out of um, some of those like freshmen so far? Yeah, and that's what I see. Like I said, his motor, he has a very high yeah. motor. Uh he's a strong kid. Uh what I what I really, really like is how he attacks the rim. Uh those plays are are momentum changers. And like you said, it brings energy, brings life to the team. You know, you go down the middle of the lane and, and dunk it on somebody's head. And you know, it gets your it gets your team going. And uh, you know, I think probably the last high flyer that Liberty's really had or was probably Andrew Smith. And that was probably yeah. you know, four or five years ago. So you had some great dunks. You had some great dunks. Yeah. I'm a little bit older than that though. So I, I wish it was four or five years ago, <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, I, I think that he, he will grow. He, he passes the ball. Well, uh, like it doesn't look, it looks like he understands the game. So I think he will be, especially as the year goes forward next year and the year after he's somebody that you could really kind of have anchored down your team. Uh, and then with the, you know, the other guys that are red shirt and I, I've seen them a little bit. I haven't really seen them in game time action. So I don't know about them, but those two, like I said, they stand out for me. Mm-hmm. And then the other guys, you know, they, they've proven what they can do. So they just have to stay on that with those new additions. And then Darius, so, you know, I think they'll be good. Looking at the uh, upcoming schedule this week, I think to me and Will, we really feel like this is such a, a important week for Liberty to you know, maybe not just squeak out two wins, but to, to, to really, I think, play well, especially coming in with uh, a really tough uh, Thanksgiving tournament with Northwestern and then either Auburn or Bradley, and then mm-hmm. even still got a really tough game at at uh, at Oral Roberts and a, a, a neutral game with Bryant. Do you kind of feel like this week is, is such a huge week for Liberty? And, and, and you know, obviously it's too early in the season. It's most likely going to come down to the A-Sun tournament. But do you feel like this is a really big week in terms of their trajectory for the season? Uh, I think it's a good week to get some momentum. Uh, you know, you you want to you want to win the games that you should win uh, to build momentum to be in the games that maybe you you're kind of the underdog in. And uh, I think that definitely they need to come out and and these take these two next games 
uh, and try to make a statement, you know, make a statement, get build some confidence, uh, get back in their groove and, uh, you know, let that momentum carry them, carry them towards the tougher games. All right. And then uh, uh, lastly, uh, looking at like the rest of the A-Sun conference, who's maybe a team that 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 really stands out to you? Um, you know, maybe either from from what you've seen or kind of what you what you've heard kind of being on the inside that you're really kind of maybe looking forward to their matchups with Liberty this year or or maybe a, a, a dark horse contender or something like that. Uh, you know, Jacksonville State, they were uh, last year. I don't know how many I haven't studied their team yet this year. I don't know how many returned, but I know they had a couple guys return. You know, they they really shot the ball well. And I think that that is one thing that hurts the uh, pack line. If you have if you have a good low post presence and not necessarily scoring a guy that can read the double team, you know, face up, step out, sh- throw the skip pass because that's that's where you want to hurt it. So. And, and then shooting around it, I think that Jacksonville State, they, they shot it well. So, and I know they did all season. Uh, I would look forward to them. I don't know how many they return, like I said. And then uh, Bellarmine, you know, they, they're kind of – this year their their team is a little different than they were last year. I watched them play a little bit against Louisville, and they, they beat Louisville. Uh, ball movement. Their their ball movement is, is pretty crazy, which always gives them a chance to take care of the ball and, and cut and backdoor and – uh, th- those are two matchups that uh, I definitely want to see uh, uh, this year for sure. And Austin P, I don't know, I don't know too much about the new team, so we'll see how that goes. They got beat by like fifty against Purdue, uh, so uh, <laughs> they, they were kind of supposed to be a team that was supposed to be really competitive. And yeah. I don't know, maybe it was just one of those you know off nights I didn't watch the game, but uh, <laughs> they definitely stood out there. Uh, their their Ken Palm rankings really tanked this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. Anthony, it's been such an honor to have you on. We really appreciate you uh, uh, joining us and, and, and taking the time out of your schedule. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, uh, you you calling games this year. And uh, uh, any any final thoughts or anything else? You have anything you want to hype before you get out of here? I know, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. If y'all ever need a, a guest co-host or if y'all ever need any, any more, uh, have any more questions, like I said, I'm, I'm always willing to jump on. And, and you know, this is fun, like I said, being back at Liberty and, just you know it's it's a family so everybody at liberty is part of my extended family put it <laughs> put it that way <laughs>